Welcome my friends to YCM. Now, standing inside is a good friend of mine, my buddy Rick. Now, Rick is third generation here at YCM and he's taken a special moment of his time, his precious time, and I'm so grateful to give us a tour inside. Now, on top of that, it just so happens to be a time of the year when distributors from around the world are here getting tours as well. So we're gonna try our best not to interrupt or be rude to any of these folks, but we wanna bring you some of the latest technology from YCM in this area. So follow me inside where we can learn a little bit more about the history, maybe some of the awards, and for sure, the machines that we have going on. And this is the young man, Rick. I was just telling you guys about Rick. How are you, my friend? Great, Tony. How are you doing? Oh, I'm so grateful Great. to be here with you and that you've taken your time out for the audience today and for me yeah. to share a little bit more about the history and definitely some of these beautiful <laughs> machines you have. Of course. Uh, I just want to show you around our, and uh, also talk about our family and the uh, business. Oh, we started in 1954 uh, with my grandfather and my uncle. Uh, back then, it was very industrial rev revolution here in Taiwan. So we started with uh, uh, repairing industrial equipments back in 1950s. Uh, that was during the industrial revolution in Taiwan here. Uh, then we started developing a packaging machine, and uh, it started becoming popular. So we started having a need for casting for these packaging machines. So we, that's when we started with our foundry. We invested in our foundry. We invested it in, in our oven and uh, what the former one ton oven. But then the, the oven, we couldn't keep it running enough. So we had to go to uh, uh, making more of the machines. So that's when we developed uh, uh, milling machines. And that's part of the evolution. I didn't realize your foundry yeah. was that old, Rick. That's yeah. incredible. Yes, yes, yeah. That's how it all started. Uh, and that's why in 1969, we started all, uh, moving to a new factory, a larger factory in, uh, nearby. It's about uh, an hour away. And uh, that's how we started. And we started building uh, uh, manual milling machines, uh, one and a half and 16 VS uh, milling machines. And, and we started uh, import exporting into the U.S. and that's called, and we took off from there. Yeah, uh, you've definitely taken off. To my understanding, you have around 500 employees, 650 yeah. employees, yeah. 700 around. I mean, the number keeps growing every <laughs> time I talk to someone. Like we keep growing, and you're focused now on five-axis machining right. because you've been worldwide known for this three-axis superior product, right? And now you're, we're going to focus on AI. We're going to focus on five-axis, and we right. get to show the audience out there some of the machines here today as well, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean. The, ba the fundamental of five axis is you have to have a stable machining condition and that's all starts from the casting itself and that's why we have a foundry we have to maintain the quality of the castings uh, to make sure that the casting is stable uh, and that's why it translates into a better accuracy on the five axis machines i almost want to teleport to the foundry yeah. right now but don't worry there's a video yeah. with rick coming very soon in the foundry yeah. we're here right now but we're going to head over there in a bit rick I really enjoy learning about this facility because when you first or when your fa family first invested in it, this land was somewhat, somewhat empty. But as I look around, the, the size of this facility, now you can't hardly expand outside of it because everybody is here. But you invested in an area that was smart over 70 years ago and have continued yeah. to expand. Yeah, back then there was, uh, the road was small, there was nothing around, it was all farmland. Um, I think my, my grandfather, my uncle took a bold move and invest in this area uh, and that's, that's uh, really helped us grow today and, and I think right now we still have capacity to grow. Yeah, yeah you do. And as we walk through here, we're going to talk a bit more about the family legacy, yeah. but I want to start here as we look at some sure. of these parts and I believe we're going to start with the concept and the idea of automation as a whole. Now automation, from what I've understood traveling around the world is Originally it was, I'm going to automate if I have thousands of parts, right? right. And now we're getting into this high mix automation, these pallet change system like you have to the yeah. far right, which we'll touch on in a little bit, but the ability yeah. to run nights and weekends, even if we have a one-off job or sure. 20 one-off jobs, this is the automation of the modern times, isn't it? Yeah, so, so definitely with uh, automations, uh, it has to be integrated with a uh, done-in-one process with five axis. It allows customers to uh, have, use less people uh, and you can run uh, lights out uh, and with uh, automation combined with the uh, five axis technology. Rick, it's not every day I get someone with your wisdom on camera. So while we're talking on the, the subject of, of done in one or one and done, and we, we call it different things in different areas of the world, I call it done in one. Where do you think the importance lies when we're talking about if I'm making this part right here, this part right here, or let's say the finished one here, and I no longer have to move it from machine to machine, right. and I'm reducing not just labor or 
footprint of how many machines I need, right. or maybe scrap rate, but the overall productivity and efficiency that goes into a shop to know that I can take a piece of raw material, mm -hmm. and when it comes off that machine, it's a finished part. Yeah. The investment in a machine like this, mm -hmm. The investment, while the upfront cost might be a tiny bit more, right. the end cost is so much more savings and we're really producing more, making more money at the end of the day, aren't yeah. we? Of course. Uh, I mean, with five axes, uh, you don't have to, like Tony had mentioned, you don't have to move the parts around. And that affects the accuracy of the parts uh, if you have to move parts around. And of course, uh, your floor spacing and, and the people you have to hire to run the machines. So at the end of the day, definitely the five axis is the way to go. Yeah, I agree. Let's navigate around this group right here. We don't, we're gonna do our very best not to interrupt the presenters. They're doing such an amazing job. Uh, <laughs> so we have to slide through. It's kind of fun, Rick. How many yeah. people are here today, by the way? Oh, I think we have a hundred dealers and customers here visiting us today. A hundred dealers and customers. How many countries are represented? Oh, uh, we're present all over the world. Uh, all over. You all guys are all over the world now. Yeah. Something I think, and I'm gonna—I'm not sure if this yeah. word's okay with you, but yeah. we use it a lot in the U.S. That I think is sexy about machining, <laughs> Rick, are these machines here that don't yeah. have the covers on them. It's like the machines got naked for me, and I oh, like yeah. it. Can we talk a little bit? Like this is one of my favorite style machines, Rick. Can we talk right. about the development through YCM with these machines? Well, when we started developing this machine, we wanted to understand what the customer needed. Uh, that's more important. And the most important thing about the five axis today is the workpiece, the maximum workpiece. Uh, so we basically designed this machine around what the customer requirements are, uh, especially in the semiconductor aerospace and dynamo sector. And that's where a lot of the five axis, where it's uh, it's fish, most efficient uh, for the uh, these industries and uh, these type of uh, machining parts. Yeah, you're yeah. exactly right. And they're actually really cool too when you right. see them spin very fast. But right. let's go back to the, you've been talking about the yeah. foundry for a while, and yeah. I like that topic yeah. as well. And we can tap on this, and we can sure. feel the vibration dampening and the quality that goes in when you have your own foundry integrated yeah. just around the corner. Right. But when we're, you mentioned three areas where, in my opinion, some of the most precise mm -hmm. and necessary to be precise industries in any part of manufacturing, mm -hmm. dye and mold pops to the top of my head. Right. How important is this, this area right here that you make in-house? Yeah. Definitely, uh, with well, the casting is, is definitely very important in a, a five-axis machine because we're dealing with volumetric accuracy, right? So, so uh, we have you have always the thermal deformations of the machines, and you have to have a good structural design and good castings, and make sure that the memories of the castings are removed so that you have a stable process. Let's talk a little bit more yeah. about this accuracy, and then yeah. I'm also going to bring up the fact that I believe you do a little hand scraping here as well, which is going to add to that accuracy of also. Course, yeah. They've actually asked me, did you grab B-roll of that? Which of course <laughs> we have to, but let's talk about the accuracy. Now, yeah. when I'm working on a five axis machine and I'm this close as I get to the camera, this close yeah. to my part, yeah. but when I have to be this far away right. from my table right. and that accuracy starts to expand, of that's course. where the complications start to come in, right? And that's, that's what right. you're paying attention to. That's right. the reason you brought it up. Yeah, and that's why we have to focus on the geometric accuracy of the machines and that's where the scraping comes in. We have to scrape the machines to achieve the maximum geometric accuracy. And so that when you translate into volumetric, uh, we're at the uh, optimized uh, accuracy as possible. Yeah, that's exactly, I mean, that's a great explanation. Right. And have you ever done hand scraping yourself? Uh, and when I was young, when I was young. <laughs> You're still young, by the way. <laughs> I've done it too, very poorly. I will not say that I'm <laughs> even close to a professional. In fact, I think I threw a hip out when I tried to do it, but I've done it as well. And it's yeah. so it's so important to the foundation and how everything's put together. I want to talk a little bit about as we're coming to the end of all of these group tours, the audience may or may not have noticed, uh, my cameraman did a great job of spreading the, <laughs> parting the Red Sea over there. Uh, but as we're coming to the end of this, and we've yeah. talked about five axis machining, right. the importance of automation, right. the foundation and the foundry, the overall precision that's required, Let's talk a little bit about the future of YCM. We've talked right. about over 70 years, the growth of the company, the expansion around the world, all yeah. the people you have here. But well, we're getting into AI now. We're getting right. into a brave new world that some people are afraid of, <laughs> but we have to adapt to because sure. it's moving quicker than a lot of us can keep up with at the moment. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, with the industrial 4.0 revolution, uh, you know, you have to start with standardization. Uh, then you get into visibility, transparency. But right now we're going through a stage where we do an optimization and automation, but the future, of course, is predictive and adaptive, which is the AI, mm -hmm. and that's where we're heading towards. Uh, and I think that's that's the technology where the technology of the future is, is to help 
uh, customers to use as much as more efficiently, uh, to make a part more efficiently as possible uh, with less manpower. And that's have to be driven by future technology and AI. Well, I've heard great wisdom from you and I've heard it from other places as well that one of the biggest issues right now is a labor shortage skills course. gap. So you said it best. It's becoming more efficient. It's right. figuring out how to do these things. It's right. adapting to this modern technology. If you had one message before we move on to one of your other yeah. amazing areas in this massive facility here in Taiwan, one message for the audience right now who's considering leaning into uh, working on the YMC, YCM machines, and I know you have thousands of customers around the world that can also give testimonials. I've interviewed them also. <laughs> but a message for someone who's learning, maybe considering their first YCM in their factory right now, what kind of message would you give them as they see so many people interested behind us? Well, uh, YCM is all about quality. It's all about stability and reliability. Uh, we recognize that in the future you have more automations and you have, want to have as little downtime as possible on the machine. So that's what we're focused on. We want to focus on the machine has to continue to run uh, on the reliability and so that you can automate. Yeah, very well said, my yeah. friend. Thank, thank you, you so much for taking your time today you. and to them later. Thank you all for thank watching. You. We have so many more different areas of YCM here in Taiwan, the largest machine tool company in all of Taiwan, and I can't wait to show you more.